Joining us now from Go247, Billy Embody, big uh, get for LSU this weekend as they land uh, linebacker Greg Penn from Maryland. Billy, good afternoon. How are you? Doing well, guys. How are you? Outstanding. Uh, tell us about uh, the recruitment and the commitment uh, and what kind of player LSU is getting in Greg Penn the third. Greg Penn's coming from one of the best high school programs in the country in Damapa. So starting there, to go into a program like that and get them, and one that, you know, being so close to Maryland, a lot of people thought the Terrapins were probably going to win this battle. But LSU just really did a nice job recruiting them. And they had him on campus for a game. They kept chipping away. Bo Pelini came in and really prioritized them since arriving in Baton Rouge. And then kind of they played some connections. Uh, Greg Penn has a family member, his uncle is Corey Robinson, who's a defensive assistant with the Saints. So they have some family here, which kind of helps, I think, make him feel a little bit better about going so far from home. Uh, but overall, LSU is getting somebody that uh, is one of the best linebackers in the country, probably ends up playing inside at the college level. He's 6'1", 225, so he's kind of built well to play in the middle of the defense. And specifically, Bo Pelini's 4'3". And that, that's kind of what they needed in this class more than anything, I think, is to address the linebacker position and specifically the inside linebacker position after Jacob Phillips and Patrick Queen left. You've got Damone Clark coming back uh, as well and then you know some other guys that are just coming up in the linebacker room. But still, to go out, get Greg Penn from so far away uh, and overcome a hometown school that held a lot of confidence that they were going to get him uh, is a big recruiting win for Bo Pelini. And it shows, I think, just how good of a job he's doing since uh, being hired as a new defensive coordinator. Uh, it was really a whole staff effort as, as well. Uh, a lot of the uh, analysts and graduate assistants, uh, Kelvin Shepard and, and Alec Osborne, Keith Sa- Sanchez, Donald D'Alessio, they all did a great job keeping on uh, Greg Penn and uh, it paid off with a big recruiting win. Billy, when you talk to everybody at 247 Sports, and I'm sure that y'all talk about you know the schools that are getting recruits to commit right now, it's impressive to me that LSU's been able to do this from guys that really haven't even been to Louisiana. They haven't been to LSU. They haven't stepped foot really on campus. And even if they have, you know, it was maybe quickly during a camp or something, but they continue to get guys to commit to just the program, maybe not even right the buildings that we have and the stadium and all that. No, they're committing to the program right now. And not every school has been able to do that during this pandemic. Yeah, you look at Greg Penn. He made it for a game, but really didn't get to come back and do a big you know, official visit or, or any of those things. But JoJo Earl, uh, Keanu Coat, uh, those are a couple of the guys that really stand out to me, Naquan Brown as well, that haven't visited LSU and still ended up trusting their gut uh, and, and feeling like, you know what, that's the spot for me. I've got a great relationship with the staff. I've seen what I can and not in person, haven't been able to put my hands on Baton Rouge, yeah. but I've been on virtual visits. I've done this and that and meetings with the coaching staff. And you know what? That's paying off. And once these guys are able to take visits at some point in the future, and maybe that helps these commitments stick even, even more so than people might expect. Billy Embody is our guest. Billy, I know that uh, the, the star ratings are not everything, and we can always name you know lower star guys that did better and higher star guys that didn't pan out. But I like to look at the average star ratings anyway. And to nobody's surprise, um, it's Ohio State, Clemson, LSU, Alabama, and Georgia. It's been that way uh, for, for quite some time. But when I look at what LSU's already got committed and what's left on the board for them and some very, very highly rated players out of Louisiana specifically – I don't know that they can get to Ohio State at, at, at number one because they've got four or five stars already committed, but it, it does look like number two is well within their reach with what they've got left on the board. Yeah, I think so too, and a lot of people are expecting this to be a big class, and that'll help them in the overall points like like you kind of alluded to there. I mean, and with Mason Smith and Tristan Lay and Sage Ryan and Brian Thomas Jr., just to name a few that are still left on the board, uh, that that's going to help the average star ranking. That's going to help in a big way uh, with all of those guys being top 100. And I believe probably like top 50 overall prospects. And you add, let's say those four to the mix and one, this class is uh, on an elite level on its own, but uh, they'll be right there to challenge for, you know, I think number two and who knows, maybe Ohio, Ohio State sees some, some attrition and falters off a little bit late, but yeah, they're going to be right up there near the top of the recruiting rankings without a doubt. 
Billy, is there anybody out of state? Is there three or four guys maybe out of the state where you feel like LSU says, hey, we've got to make these guys an emphasis? Because we know, you know, the top three in Louisiana and they're being from Louisiana, LSU has to make sure they close those guys. But anybody out of state that they've had a relationship with over the last couple of seasons that they feel like they've got a really good end and potentially could get them to come to Louisiana? Yeah, I think the that these are the four that I kind of circle and maybe – you know, there's a couple like a couple more I could name, but I'll go with five-star offense tackle Tristan Lay. Uh, he's been to Baton Rouge. He's camp. Uh, he's seen it. So he's he's got uh, LSU right near the top of his list. They're fighting for him. Uh, Prince Colley, who, who's somebody that I think, unless you you've really really been following closely, he's risen up the recruiting rankings. Uh, LSU offered in late May, and a lot of other national programs have offered just over the course of this pandemic and the recruiting shutdown. He's blown up. He's probably one of their biggest targets left on the board. He's a four-star linebacker out of Tennessee, and it, he left off Vanderbilt and Tennessee from his top schools list. And a lot of people think LSU is moving into a pretty prime position to land him. Um, uh, Thomas Fedone, the four-star tight end, the number one tight end of the country. LSU's battling Nebraska and Iowa and some of these other national powers to land him. Uh, those guys are all elite. And then Nathaniel Wiggins, who actually just – that his commitment date uh, for later this summer, he's a top 100 overall prospect and, and, a, and one of the best corners in the country. And some people think LSU could very well uh, go into the state of Georgia and land another California native. And he goes to school in Westlake, just near the Atlanta area. Uh, and but some people are starting to think maybe LSU is going to be able to beat out Oregon and USC and some of these other programs uh, that, that have been recruiting him uh, even when he was back on the West Coast. Billy, wouldn't be a segment with you if we didn't talk about Musa Cisse. So I can uh, change uh, topics. <laughs> I wore my and, basketball shirt today. You Andy. did. I you wore my did. Basketball shirt. So <laughs> an, another week has gone by. Uh, there were some rumblings over the weekend in regard to him. Do you feel better, worse, or about the same as you did about Cisse than you did a week ago? Yeah, I think I feel a little bit better. And uh, that's uh, twofold. Uh, one, a lot of people thought he was going to commit this this next week and, and kind of make it or this last week and make make his decision. And most people thought that would be Memphis if that happened, which I would agree with that. But like you said, another week passed and no decision, no signing, no enrolling anywhere from Musa Cisse, the five star center out of the Memphis area. And just talking to a couple people over the weekend, there's a little bit of positivity on LSU side that maybe there's a change in the wind yet again for Musa Cisse. And so we're going to continue to monitor this one. It wasn't looking good going into last week, but again, as, as another week rolled by and uh, talking with some people over the weekend, uh, there's, there's uh, some positivity. So there's a shot, which is all I think you can ask for uh, if you're LSU right now. And look, they've done a good job recruiting them. They really have. And so it's no surprise that uh, there, there's a, uh, you know, a back and forth here between two of the best recruiters in the country and Penny Hardaway and Will Wade. Billy, is there any chance that he is putting off his decision as long as possible just to get enough information at whether there's definitely going to be a basketball season? I hate to go that far out, but I don't think any of us knows for sure how the fall semester is going to go going to go uh, in regards to the virus. So is there any chance that he's hanging out to say, listen, if they go ahead and they cancel the fall semester everywhere and basketball is not going to start, I'm just headed to the G League? Yeah, I mean, that that's a you know possibility, I think. And I, I don't blame him for doing that. I mean, now the thing is, is he could enroll somewhere. He can start getting into a weight program. And, uh, you know, LSU has guys on campus working out. Memphis has guys on campus working out and, and starting to get ready for their – 2020 season if, if it does indeed happen so I, I think he's uh, probably looking at that and, and just doing his due diligence on that but um, I don't think that's what the holdup is I, I do think he's just a little torn when you, you you talk about you know Memphis and LSU having guys on campus working out we know everything got pushed back Haney and I talked about it last week the NBA draft gets pushed back to October and, and the combine in August there these coaches really have a challenge figuring out exactly who's going to be on their roster for some of these top-tier programs. LSU has multiple guys with their name in the draft. Now, Will Wade's got a pretty good idea of who's coming back, but you just never know. And then a guy like Musa Cisse, you know, if he if you add him to your lineup, that's a gigantic ad. But right now, you're kind of playing the waiting game on a lot of these guys. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, 
it's it's weird times. It really is. And and like you said, though, I think Will Wade has a good idea of who's going to come back. I, I do think Trenton Watford's probably the most 50-50 uh, coin toss uh, of, of any of the guys. But uh, for the most part, I think he knows what he's going to have coming back. And I don't think there's a lot of pressure on these guys to go ahead and pull their names out of the draft with all the uncertainty going on. And, you know, kind of like uh, Hanny alluded to with Musa Cisse, I mean, maybe they're all kind of watching if college basketball cancels their season. Maybe some of them will just keep their name in and, and say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go pro. Billy and Body go 247. Thanks a lot. Uh, we'll keep in touch. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.